Welcome back. There are new signs the inquiry is escalating into former President Donald Trump's role in paying hush money to an adult film actress during his 2016 presidential campaign. The New York Times is reporting that Hope Hicks, once a senior advisor to the former president who served as spokeswoman for that campaign, was seen walking into the Manhattan District Attorney's office yesterday. Hicks is at least the seventh witness to meet with prosecutors since the DA, Alvin Bragg, convened a grand jury back in January to hear evidence in the case as prosecutors investigate Trump's hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. The Times reports it was not clear if Hicks was testifying before the grand jury or was only meeting with prosecutors to answer their questions. A spokesperson for the DA's office and Hicks's attorney both declined to comment. Joining us now, the founder of the conservative website, The Bulwark, our friend, Charlie Sykes. Charlie, thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, let's just morning. get your reaction uh, to what seems to be the latest sign that the legal peril for Donald Trump is increasing. There's so many fronts. Manhattan, Georgia, January 6th, the Mar-a-Lago documents. Um, let's talk, though, about the political impact as this approaches, is this going to hurt or help Trump in the Republican primary field? Well, well, first of all, uh, Jonathan, I, I am starting to feel like Lucy with the football with all of these legal issues. Like, let's wait until we see what actually happens. We've been promised this uh, so many times, as, as you know. Um, but the question you asked whether it will help or hurt, right now, given the state of the Republican Party, um, it's, uh, it, it is certainly possible that uh, Donald Trump could be indicted and that it could actually strengthen his hold on the party, in part because um, in, his opponents have not yet decided that they're ever going to break with him on something like this. So there is a rally around the flag. Look, that was a very dark speech the other day at CPAC, and I think people actually ought to pay uh, attention to it when he talks about, you know, I am your retribution. He uses the word retribution twice. He, you know, he basically is saying, look, I stand for vengeance. This is not a morning in America campaign here. This is uh, Donald Trump. I am nemesis. Um, and if you're running, you know, on that with that kind of a, a, a persona, indictments will actually just simply feed into that sense of victimization in the Republican base. So um, at, at this at this point, um, it's it's hard to say, but I just don't see uh, the Republican Party moving away from him, even if he is indicted at this point. Yeah, Trump, of course, also downplayed January 6th again, deeming it a very important day. Uh, certainly, as you say, a very, very dark speech. So let's get your analysis of where things stand right now. I mean, he did win the CPAC straw poll. That's no surprise. Uh, that was a MAGA gathering, basically. Uh, DeSantis looms. We discussed about him earlier in the show that right now, at least, he's the guy that seems to be coalescing the anti-Trump forces, but he hasn't been nationally vetted. We don't know where that goes. Um, but, but give us a sense of where you think DeSantis stands right now, and is there any other Republican out there? Pompeo, Pence, Haley, Tim Scott, someone else that's not on the radar right now that you think could actually make a run at this. No, right now, DeSantis, you know, has the best position. He is broadly acceptable at the moment to, to much of the MAGA base, not obviously, you know, all of it, but much of it. He's also acceptable to the, the so-called normies. I think the business community uh, seems to be, uh, you know, open to him. Uh, many of the, you know, uh, major donors are open to him. But you know, to your point, we don't know what Ron DeSantis is going to look like as a presidential campaign. And, you know, a reminder of all of the governors who look great on paper and then fell flat on their face. And I have to say that I'm, I'm starting actually uh, to become a little bit more bearish on DeSantis because I, I'm trying to imagine how his appeal and his relentless culture warrior rhetoric, which has sort of gotten into a doom loop now, the same thing over and over and over again, how that's going to scale up nationally. We also have no idea how he's going to take, uh, you know, take the punches. What happens when eventually he's on a stage with Donald Trump and Donald Trump comes at him? I mean, Trump has already signaled um, you know, that he's coming after anybody that poses a real threat to him. And DeSantis does. I mean, he started off by suggesting he was a groomer. So that escalated pretty quickly, didn't it? As for all of the others, um, I'm not, not sure what their lane is uh, at, at, at this point. And if early on Donald Trump knocks out Ron DeSantis, 
um, I think that he's on a glide path to the nomination as opposed to uh, Republicans turning their lonely eyes to Mike Pompeo or Nikki Haley. I mean, it can't be said enough how early we are in the process, but it suddenly feels like Trump has momentum again, which I guess we shouldn't be surprised at considering he seems to just be always there. Charlie Sykes, thank you. We Let's greatly appreciate your analysis and hope we can speak thank to you. you again soon.